is our main event of the evening. Our second main event begins. Take us behind the numbers. Hey, look at the tail of the tape ray. It's virtually even, other than the age of both Rosario and Charlo. Rosario being the younger at 25 years old, while Charlo stands at 30 years old. Uh, experience probably favors, favors Charlo a little bit, but again, pretty even. And let's, as you see the rules, no three knockdown rule, no standing day gun, cannot be saved by the bell in any round, only the referee can stop the fight, the fight is official after four rounds have been completed. Before the end of the fourth round, if it's an accidental foul, no decision after the fourth, they go to the scorecard. So, our second main event, will Jermel Charlo go 2-0 and with his brother Jamal, or will Jason Rosario become the new unified Super welterweight champion, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Mohegan Sun Arena here in Uncasville, Connecticut, Premier Boxing Champions presents our second featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Lions Only Promotions, TGB Promotions, Samson Boxing, and Showtime. Sponsored by Proper Number 12 Irish Whiskey, the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. This bout is sanctioned by the WBA, the President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the WBC, President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Michael George, and the IBF, the President Daryl Peoples. Along with the Mohegan Tribe, Department of Athletic Regulations, the Chairman of the Tribe is James Gessner, the Director is Michael Mazzuli. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside. From Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From Flushing, New York, John McKay. And from Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. We introduce our third man to the ring, the referee in charge, who will be giving instructions after the introductions, Harvey Dock. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the unified 154-pound championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Mohegan Sun Arena, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with red trim, and hailing from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at 153 and one half pounds. His record stands at 20 wins, one loss and one draw with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making the first defense of his newly earned crown. Here is the outstanding and reigning WBA and IBF 154 pound champion of the world. Introducing Jason Banana Rosario. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing multicolor blue, green, and gold trunks, he is fighting out of and representing his home of Houston, Texas. His weight, 153 and three quarter pounds. Having avenged his only loss, his overall record stands at 33 wins, one loss with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his seventh world title appearance, here is one of the sensational boxing twin world champions, the two-time and current reigning and defending WBC super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Jermel Iron Man Charlo. And once again, our third man to the ring, the referee now to give instructions, Harvey Duck. Okay, referee Mike here. Okay, guys, we went over the instructions earlier. As a reminder, obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Over decimate total el tiempo. Choco los guantes. Buena suerte. Good luck. Our second main event of the evening, Jermel Charlo and Jason Rosario. Just the second time in history in this division that the winner will take home three world titles. Will it be Jermel Charlo from Houston, Texas? Or will it be Jason Rosario from the Dominican Republic? Referee in charge, Harvey Dot. Super Watchweight Supremacy on the line. We are underway. Both men have knockout percentages of over 50%. 
Charlo at 50%, Rosario at just over 60%. ESPN.com and the ring, both ring, Jermel and Rosario, one and two. So for all the boxing haters out there that the best don't fight the best, well, the best are, are fighting the best right now. This is absolutely the two best going at it here tonight. Rosario looks extremely big, and my goodness, I wonder what he walked in. But well, we say he changed his uh, his strength and conditioning coach in his last fight with Julian Williams. We saw great results. I mean, just even. Yes, he looked fantastic in that fight, but physically, just looking at him, he looked oh, oh, There's a left, there's a right, and there is... That's a knockdown for Charlo, my goodness! Charlo has put down Rosario, thought it was a tangling up of feet, but no, it was a knockdown. Oh my goodness, Charlo has got to Rosario early. Rosario's got to be careful. He was knocked down three times against Nathaniel Gallimore, and he was stunned, even though he dominated Julian Williams' fight. He was stunned one time in that fight as well. And let's not forget also, Jermel Charlo knocked out Erickson Lupin in impressive fashion three years ago at Barclays Center in October of 2017. So, Jermel Charlo knows what it's like to turn out adversaries' lights early. A left hook for the champion. Keeps up just how he is throwing with some conviction. He's sitting down in his punches. He's throwing with venomous intentions. Make no mistake about it. Stiff jab by Charlo. I think Rosario, though, has gathered himself. Yeah, he appears. I think it was one of the, the last knockdowns. Exactly. Very surprising. Caught off guard. Certainly did connect, but I don't think Rosario was expecting the fight to amp up that quickly here in round one. I thought maybe he thought it was going to be a more of a feeling out process in this first round. Well, from our broadcast position, I thought it could have been a tangling up in, in feet and everything else, but we'll go back, and, and Harvey Doc saw it, so I completely concur with him, and I will further that point. A nice left hook by Charlo. But Rosario has faced adversity over the course of his career. Final moments oh, of the Charlo first round. Knockdown knock for Black. Charlo, but a right to the body by Rosario. That ends the first. Credit to Rosario for maintaining his composure at the, after the knockdown. Uh, that was, see, I, I don't know, though. It's, it was certainly a punch, but I think, uh, let's see. He, I don't know if he would have been knocked down. It looked like his leg. Oh, there was a shot on the temple. Okay, that's what it was. Yep. That's what it was. The feet did get tangled up a little bit, but that was well after yep. that shot on the top of the head. Proper call by Harvey Doc. Again, taking a look at it. We zero in, boom, okay, it's that shot on the top of the head. That kind of threw off the balance. Threw off the balance, and then what I got confused about is Charlo went forward, and I thought that the feet, you know what, that was a clear knockdown. Yeah, and you didn't see any argument from Rosario. No, he not. He wasn't arguing with Harvey Doc that that wasn't a knockdown. Usually fighters, if that, if that was a true slip, you'll see them argue, argue the exactly. I, I agree with the knockdown at the beginning, but just watching it on replay, I wanted to see what punch it was. It was a grazing shot, but it landed on the top of the head of Rosario, and it short-circuited him. When you hit someone on the top of the temple, a few seconds later, it'll take away your legs. It takes a little bit of time for your brain to process that you've been hit on the top of your head. There's a good jab by Charlo. Charlo ripping to the body of Rosario. Nice left hook by Charlo. He looks so sharp and fast. Yeah, he's just ready to explode. Every, every punch he's thrown, like I said, it's with you know, violence on his mind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And right now, if you're Rosario, this is not the start that you're looking for in this unification power. That was a little bit of a 
more positive exchange for Rosario going to the body of Charlie. And that's what they have to do. Derek Pacheco didn't do enough of that to Jermall. I think Rosario really needs to focus on the body well, this to Jermall because one thing about the Charlo twins is they have so much power. But one thing you can do is if you go to the body, and Tony Harrison did that, and I'll get this fight. Yep, and both fights really. He was fighting a, a really nice fight. And even the rematch. Now Rosario coming forward. Charlo. Complaining about shots below the belt. Harvey Dodge warning Rosario to keep his punches up. The only time but even though you haven't been deducted, that gives you that gives Charlo something to think about. Okay, continue to go, go there here, Rosario. But Rosario is ripping the body of Jamel Charlo here. And, but back comes Charlo. No, Jermel Charlo is not going to be on the ropes for too long. <laughs> He's a guy that's nearly impossible to keep on the ropes. Under a minute left here in the second round. Great job by our great camera crew and staff to give us that picture perfect look of the knockdown in the first round. That left hook on the top of the head of Rosario that put him down. Now we're starting to see Rosario go to work. This is what we're seeing against Julian Williams. Kind of uses his body, digs into the body of Charlo, and then really pushes up against them and, and throws a couple of uh, combinations before he dips away. Shots that were blocked by Charlo and Rosario. Final moments of the second. A left hook to the body. The lone world titleist from the Dominican Republic targeting the body of Jermel Charlo as the second ends here in the Super Welterweight Unification matchup. Listening to the corner of Jermel Charlo with Derek James as his trainer. There is Jamal Charlo. Here is Jamal. That was his. He's watching the Round three, this one is scheduled for 12 between Jermel and Charlo, the WBC Super Welterweight Champion, and the IBF and WBA Super Welterweight Champion, Jason Rosario. But Rosario recovered nicely after that knockdown in the first round. He showed a very good account of himself in the second. Yeah, he certainly did. And he's got to continue to keep that pressure on, dig into the body of uh, Jermel. There you see Rosario walking Jermel down. Step back, step back. He continues to come forward. He has heavy hands. And he, when he lands, they're flooding shots from Rosario. Charlo Poppy. Rosario with the jab. If you're Charlie, you got to do more. Of that. You pop the jab a little bit more. That's one of the differences in the best between Jermel. Jermel, Jermel really uses his jab well. Jermel could use it more. I think Jermel is going to need to use it more to be successful against Jason Rosario. Now he ties up as a minute ten has come off the clock here in the third. Charlo coming into the fight with the Good jab by Jamel Charlo. But a high guard by Rosario. Charlo has been 10 rounds or more, 10 times in his career, just three times for Rosario. It's a left hook that missed by Charlo. The jab from Charlo and then Rosario again backs Charlo up against the ropes. Charlo smartly ties him up. Keep him up, keep him up. 
Harvey Dock warning Jason Rosario a second time to keep the punches up. And if you're Rosario, you just continue to keep fighting your fight. I mean, you gotta still continue to dig in his body. Should it let those instructions phase on the sideline? He's intentionally going down low to Charlo. He's got to also just keep focus. And now Charlo threw a couple of punches off block by Rosario. Rosario stalking Jamal Charlo, but now Charlo trying to come back in the center of the ring. Gets out of the way of those big shots from Rosario. Rosario's waiting for his moment to try to unload. And I'm sure this is some of the theme that Jermel's not used to, a guy walking him down, coming forward. A lot of fighters do not fight Jermel this way. No, they don't. They don't come forward against him at all. I think Erickson Lucan tried to do it. It didn't serve him well. No. Five moments of the third. Taking a look at some of the highlights of that round, you see Rosario has Charlo up against the ropes and just continuing throwing from different angles, able to get through the defense. Didn't see much when Charlo was complaining about the low blow. Um, I think he was just more frustrated that was a little bit below the belt. Nonetheless, though, I mean, again, anything you can do to frustrate Jermel, I mean, it's a win. As long as you're not getting a point deducted. Derek James telling Jermel Charlie wants him to go to the body. He actually asked Derek James, you know, in terms of making adjustments, he said, I make adjustments based on not the round that we just saw on the previous round before that because I start to see tendencies in the opponent. That's the sign of a really good trainer. He's just been one step ahead. Brilliant. I mean, look what they were able to do to Tony Harrison back on December 21st when Charlo reclaimed the WBC Super Weltweight Championship. Rosario's just doing a nice job at blocking a lot of these punches from Charlo. Don't know how long that will last because obviously Charlo just throws with a rage. Rosario certainly has to tread lightly. There's a right hand that got through the guard by Charlo, but Rosario has gotten better as a fundamental boxer. His defense has gotten infinitely better, even from January's fight with Julian Williams. It certainly has. And, and like I said in the preview to this fight, so many fighters come into this fight with almost a sense of fear against the Charlos and Jermel in particular. We really didn't see that with Tony Harrison, which is why he was able to win that controversial bout against Jermel. And he was Tony Yeah, and then even in the rematch, I mean, he was fighting a really nice fight. He was losing on the scorecard, but not by much at all until he was knocked down. Halfway mark of the fourth. And Rosario, I mean, look, from where he was brought up, where he came from, there's certainly no fear in him. Boy, no doubt about it, and it's serving him well. You would think that after getting knocked out in the first round, there would be down the line of Rosario. It has been the complete antithesis. There's a left hook to the body by Rosario. Good jab from Rosario. You know, boxing gives itself, uh, I think Charlo is wondering, like, man, oh, man, I can't keep this guy off of me. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he knows he's in for not the easiest night at the office. A left hook upstairs after connected by Charlo, but back comes Rosario. He's just so big and massive, is Rosario. And again, took to the body by Rosario. And Rosario, when he, when he gets some, he's going straight to the body. There, he's not going up to upstairs. He's digging right into the body, which is, I think, a beautiful game plan from his his corner and his trainer to focus on the body because you take away that power. I asked Samson Luke, which his promoter, what his prediction was. He said, I could see it going the full 12, but I can also see Rosario 
finishing off Charlo late in the fight. He goes, but it will be late. And that's the end of the round. And that's a sign of we're focusing on the body. We know and understand that body shots will eventually it takes down the line of the fight for it to wear on the fight. Round five, this one is scheduled for 12. Between Jermel Charlo and Jason Rosario, super welterweight unification up for grabs. Just the second time in history that this has happened where the winner will take home three world titles. Double jab by Jason Rosario. Derek James telling Charlo he wants to see more jabs. Rosario just continuing to walk Jermel down. There's another really nice jab from Rosario. Charlo tried to answer. Good left hook by both. Charlo went to southpaw for a brief moment. Yep. It almost seems like Rosario is just unfazed by Charlo right now. Listen to me. Excuse me. Stop on the break. A minute has come off the clock here in the fifth. There's a left hook to the body by Rosario. Rosario stays busy with that jab. Harvey Doc warning about holding and pushing the head down. No, no, no. Rosario's like, get out of my way. I want to, I want to fight. Let's go. And we've seen that at, with some great fighters. That can be mentally training. Yes. When a guy is just in your face nonstop, we saw that how mentally draining it was for Canelo when he fought Triple G both times. Absolutely. And, and then we saw it with Triple G when he fought Derbyanchenko as well. When a guy's coming forward and not really responding too well or not giving you any signs that he's being hurt by your punches, that could mentally fatigue you. But again, Charlo has got to think, I knocked this guy down once before. I can do the exact same. Good jab followed by a right hand. There you go. Exactly that point. He came forward. He got tagged with the right hand. Did Jason Rosario. And you're right, right? I mean, there, you cannot be careless and make a mistake against Jermel. He will make you pay at the drop of a dime. And that's exactly what nearly happened. But man, Rosario's got a very good chin because typically that right hand could decapitate most. And who knows, maybe that first knockdown was the knockdown that just woke him up and, and really got him got out alive in the fight. Exactly, he got the adrenaline going. If the adrenaline wasn't already going. Final 10 seconds of the fifth round. This is a very compelling, high level unification matchup between Jermel Charlo and Jason Rosario. We're heading towards the sixth. Take a look at some of the action from the fifth. Right there was a beautiful left jab. And then Rosario, again, doesn't stop there. With the, followed it up with an uppercut that was partially blocked. And then right here, there's Rosario just trying to dig into the body a any chance he gets. Again, those aren't really big, powerful shots, but they add up. Boom, there's a big right hand that nearly ended the night of Jason Rosario, but he took it well. One thing about Jermel Charlo, he's only averaging 37 punches per round. I wonder if he's going to try to increase that output. Well, I think in a fight like this, of this magnitude against a guy like Rosario, you're gonna have to do it. 
And listen, the one thing about Jason Rosario or about Charlo is that he is facing the absolute best Jason Rosario. He looks in a tip top physical shape and everything seems to be coming together for Rosario when it comes to his preparation for this fight against Charlo. These are the best fighting the best. There you go. Really nice defense from Rosario as he's partially blocking Jamel's shots. Again, continue to walk him down. Will Rosario be able to keep this approach up for the rest of the fight? I don't know. Over and right by Charlo moments ago. But so far, so good for Rosario after that uh, sit back, sit back. dangerous first round that he suffered. Rosario moving forward. We'll see how Charlo responds backpedaling. Well, could this be a deduction to point? Shot below the belt. One more time. It's going to be a point. Keep oh, him up. Man. Right? Keep him up. Harvey Doc right? warning Rosario one time more in. time, and that'll be a deduction and a point. That could be massive. And if you're, especially after a knockdown, a 10 8 round already in the bank for Charlie, you cannot afford to give away a point. We're coming up on 50% of the way done here in the sixth. Double left hook by Rosario. Charlo looking for his opening uh, left hook that misses, but he is just stalking Charlo as a Rosario. There's a right that connected both in close quarters. Charlo wisely does not want to get in that quote unquote firefight with the Dominican Republic world champion. Sometimes in those exchanges where it's one of those, you gotta, you better bite down on your mouthpiece because you don't know where the bombs are gonna be coming from and landing. And that's what that exchange was right there. And Charles was like, oh, no thank you. Under 30 seconds left in the Keep him up, keep him up. Harvey Dog telling him to keep, to keep the punches up. I don't like how he almost got in the way and then they were a little bit caught off guard. Do we punch, do we not? They just said, well, let's just throw anyway. Rosario is just not stop right there. Left hook, followed by a right. Rosario goes down for the first, the second time in the fight. Cuatro, cinco, seis. Time. For the second time in the fight, Jason Rosario is down and he's in deep trouble. That affected him. That was a bigger knockdown than the first one, right? The first one was more of a shock knockdown and he was able to compose himself. This one, I think, may have lasting effects for the rest of the fight. Listen to me. I was caught off guard. That's why I thought it was, I failed to realize it was such a long time ago that Charlo got the first knockdown. There's that left hook, then that right. Boom. And that put him down. Did Rosario for the second time in the fight. And you saw the legs buckle. And that's one of the dangers of, you know, when you walk down a guy like Jermel Charlo, you open yourself up to these moments. And here you go. Boom, the left, that started the downfall, and then Charlo throws that right, bang. It didn't even really hit him, hardly at all. I think it was more on the shoulder. I think he was just still thrown off from that first shot. As we enter the seventh, well, that's another 10-8 round for Jermel Charlo. So, in theory, he has a sizable lead right now as we enter the second half of the fight. I, and it still looks like Rosario, his legs are a little bit wobbly. 
And that's what I said at the beginning of the fight. I've never seen anyone walk down Jermel like, like Rosario's been doing. However, you, you have to fight so perfect and so clean to not allow those moments that where Jermel can use his power and explode on you. And that, just like he did in the last round. Well, for Charlo, that was a big knockdown. The second time that he's put Rosario on the deck. Can he make it a third time? Rosario got a little bit careless. And when you keep walking down someone with the pinpoint accuracy, like Jermel Charlo, sometimes when you get too close to the fire, you're going to get burned. And that's what happened in the sixth round. That's what makes Jermel so tough to fight. Well, he's an underrated boxer in my opinion, but he has Especially in recent memory, the past four or five years, he has showcased his power, especially training under Derek James. Yep. Midway point of the seventh. The fight that stands out to me where we started to really see the power is back in May of 2016 when he finished off John David Jackson. Jermel was losing the fight on the scorecards on every round heading towards the eighth. And what did he do? He turned out John David Jackson's lights to become the world champion. There's an overhand right by Charlo. So far, I would say this is a great round for Rosario just for the simple fact that he seems to slowly have gotten his balance back under him throughout this round. He was in deep trouble going to the corner in between the sixth and seventh. There's a right to the body by Jermel Charlo. But back comes Rosario. And another thing that Jamel doesn't, and the troubles in general don't get credit enough for, is their chin. You know, we always talk about their opponents and their chin and some of the shots they take. The Charlos take tremendous shots sometimes, and it really doesn't phase them. I, I don't think I've ever seen the Charlos in, in any real knockout danger. Well, Jermel's only been down once in his career. That was a while ago against Charlie Edwards. But that was the only time he's been down in his professional career. We're on to the eighth. And I think that round was just a confidence booster for Rosadio, but Jermel is starting to pull away. Yeah, that knockdown was a real turning point. Rosario was fighting a really nice fight. And then that knockout change, knockdown change, everything that, that allowed Jermel to stack up another round because Rosario was still working his way back into the fight in that seventh round. Take a look at the last five fights for Jermel Charlo. You see the knockout over Tony Harrison, the third round knockout over Jorge Cota and dating back to October of 2017 with that first round knockout over Erickson Lubin. Headed towards round eight. This one's scheduled for 12 and down goes Rosario for the third time in the fight. I think it might be over. Yes. And this one is over. And now the super welterweight champion of the world, Houston's very own Jermel Charlo, as he dispatches of Jason Rosario in grand fashion. That is how you close the show. My goodness, that was just, that was just that looked like just a stiff jab to the body. Rosario is still on the canvas, writhing in pain. The air came out of his lungs. Something must have happened. Obviously, the punch caused it, but he, I don't know, he, he may have broken a rib or because that he dropped in a heap, in a heap, and he was having this serious pain, agonizing pain.
And again, like when I when we saw that wasn't even okay. one of the toughest punch, punches we've ever seen Jermel throw. It was just a straight jab. Okay. I'd like to, to see stomach. that again. And he's still wincing into pain. Oh my. I think he's even he's let them know that it hurts to sit down, he needs to stand. I don't think after this performance there is no doubt as to who the baddest man at 154 is, and it's Jermel Charlo. Both show a sign of respect. And I think Jermel, you know, that was a sign of respect. And obviously he was happy for the win, but it was I don't I think he was more surprised that no one's ever fought him that way. Okay. Just trying to walk him down. Yeah, yeah. Really, usually it's Jermel dictating it. Let's take a look at this replay from overhead. Yeah, it was a jab right to the abdomen. Yeah, it was it, it, it was a simple straight jab. It must have been in the right spot that caused that type of reaction as we look. Let's see it again. Yeah, he might have broken some ribs. That was a jab. Yeah, and it might it, and you, you saw those arms, he just yeah. tense up. He yeah. put some belts around him or on him or something. And it's sure. Because we saw Rosario take a, a more flush shots than this one and not get knocked out by Charlo. Put your shirt on first, man. We've given you What a performance. That's one of the most unusual knockout shots, Ray, that I think I've ever seen. I can't remember where I saw him. Here's the reaction from Jamal, his brother. And the Charlo brothers go 2-0 on the night. Talk about Lions only. Talk about making the critics put some respect on your name. There was a exactly. lot of critics out there that were downplaying the talent of the Charlo twins. I think after tonight, those critics they're going to be hushed. Exactly. They're they don't really have much to go off of it anymore. And there is. And he's collecting his hardware. Is Jermel Charlo. He's smiling from ear to ear. This is exactly what they dreamed about all camp long. <laughs> Look at Jermel, all decked out. He's got. He's iced out I'm with all the say, gold. He's got a lot of gold. He is, and we said the winner of this fight was going to be the man in the super welterweight division. He now gets the opportunity to really sit at the head of the table and really pick and choose who he wants to fight from here on out because people got to chase him. Oh, well, you know what? They are going to have a hard time dealing with him. And Ladies here's and Jimmy gentlemen, Lennon we Jr. have the time of 21 seconds of round number eight. A referee in charge, Harvey Doc, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is now the unified WBA, WBC, and IBF 154-pound champion of the world, Jermel Ironman Charlo.